Yo, this is Bench Gamer here. So more information about the endgame mode that we are supposedly getting for Genshin Impact and 4.7 has started coming out. Uh, some of this is pretty simple, but much needed, which is an increase in the amount of rewards that we are going to be getting in the old Spiral Best. It's going to be increasing from 600 to 800. So yeah, that's pretty simple. It's a very welcome change but it's not like we ever got that many primo gems in the old spiral best in the first place it was always just there to give us fomo so that we feel like we need to do spiral best even though the vast majority of players still don't do it it's just it's literally just there to give us fomo it's less than five witches i i think it's like 160 primos i don't i can't i can't even remember and yeah, it's, it's, it's literally less than four witches so it's really just there to give you fomo and now it's a bit less fomo because it's 800 witches which is still wait is that actually exactly Oh, that's five wishes now. We are getting five wishes if you do the entire Sparrow Bez. Holy shit, guys. Half of a multi. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be sarcastic here, but I'm actually really excited for this because, well, anything that is more stuff is good for Genshin Impact, whether that's endgame content or, you know, more open world, more anything. I am supportive of any sort of endgame content, any sort of more content for Genshin Impact, and this is finally happening. Um, apparently, you know, it's still not officially confirmed, but... I guess we can we can talk about it. I will risk whatever might be coming to me by talking about this because I'm just so excited. Anyways, um, we are getting an actual name. We are getting a lot of more specific information now. Um, apparently, the Spiral Best is going to be region specific. So the new Spiral Best is going to be in Mondstadt. It's called Fantasy Realm Epic Poem. And apparently, it's going to be separated into seasons. I don't know what the difference is between seasons and the current rotation rotations we're getting in Spiral Best right now. So maybe the seasons will be a longer period of time compared to the two weeks we have for the current Spiral Best before it like it resets. And then like theoretically we would get new enemies, but that hasn't really happened for a long time now. Every single time we get a reset, it kind of just has the old enemies. So that's really boring. Hopefully this is not the same thing. And I don't think it is because from what we are seeing here, there is quite a lot of difference between this new Spiral Best and the old one. So Obviously, the name is different. It's called Fantasy Realm Epic Poem. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the the peak fiction. It's not peak fiction. The pure fiction in Honkai Star Wars. Everybody just calls it peak fiction for whatever reason. But obviously, it has a new name. And it's region specific. This time into Mondstadt. I don't know if this is for this current season. So maybe this season, it'll be in Mondstadt. And the next season, it'll be Liu. And the next season, it'll be in Sumeru or Inazuma or wherever. Or if it's just going to be in Mondstadt the entire time. Because the old Spiral Abyss is in Mondstadt as well, or at least like an old, another part of Mondstadt that's not connected to it. But right now it seems to be uh, specifically Mondstadt, which is fine. Like there's no reason why it wouldn't be. The old Spiral Abyss is there. So the first season, only characters with Pyro, Electro, and Anemo elements are allowed to participate. This was something that was rumored um, when the first the the first league started coming out, which is that this Spiral Abyss will limit you to certain types of characters. Um, originally they said that it would be only limited to like certain regions so in this season you might only be able to use Mondstadt characters and the next region next season you might only be able to use Inamizuma or Sumeru characters I thought that was pretty dumb at first but the more I think about it the more okay I'll just keep I'll just keep looking at this stuff and it'll become more clear as to what I'm talking about later on but yeah um you are going to be only able to use certain elemental types it seems for this first season and for some kids, for some players, obviously new players, this is going to be kind of a hassle because you're not going to have every single elemental type covered with a good character. But I think this seems to be only for for endgame players. This seems to be something that is more specific to end endgame players now, which I am a fan of. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be excited for this as a new player, which is fine because this is for endgame players, right? This is for players who have a lot of characters. This is for players who have spent a lot of money on the game. There is no reason why this has to be a player, a, a, a play mode or, you know, a type of gameplay that is only for, that is for everybody. It doesn't have to be for everybody. Just like how the card game is not for everybody, this could just be something for endgame players. I think this might actually be a good thing because it's kind of like how people get so bored of the game that they just use abyss randomizers to make it more interesting i have never been a fan of abyss randomizers because i'm i don't like artificially limiting myself to certain types of play styles just to make it you know artificially more difficult i i've never been a fan of that i thought nuzlocke was a fucking stupid ass thing that you know pokemon players do to just kind of cope with the fact that the game is made for little kids and 
and there's nothing really any more anything more interesting to do in the game besides just artificially limiting to yourself to using like one character one pokemon before it dies anyways that's just an, that's another rant i have going to go on so the first few characters the first characters that um this is kind of confusing because it says opening characters sayu beto wander chevreuse arlecchino chlorin season one Entry requires using these characters. Trial versions are available if you do not own them. Note that all opening characters must be present. Missing even one will prevent entry. So this is, this sounds extremely toxic, right? This sounds extremely toxic because apparently if you do not have certain characters, you just cannot do the, the, the Spiral Abyss at all. Moreover, opening characters will receive special buffs in the Fantasy Realm Epic Poem and the open world increase. So this is kind of confusing as well because like is the spiral abyss going to be an open world thing why, why is it called a spiral abyss at all at this point then it, it says you're going to get buff in fantasy realm epic poem and the open world increased attack and defense which sounds kind of weird because it's not like we need increased attack and defense in the open world so this has me a tiny bit confused because it's kind of separating the end game mode called F fantasy realm epic poem and the open world and it also says you have to have certain characters sayu beto Wander, Chevreuse, Arlecchino, Clorind. So now I'm thinking maybe it's not going to be locked to a certain region. Maybe it's just going to take a bunch of characters in the game as it is, whether or not they're from Mondstadt or, or you know, Liyue or Inazuma, and just say, okay, these are the characters that you are going to only be able to use for this season of the new Spiral Abyss. And it does say that we will get trial versions if you don't own them. Note that. So maybe if you don't, maybe if you don't have those characters, you can still do the spiral best, the new spiral best, but you just won't be able to use um built characters for them. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. So I already have Beto, Sayu, Wanderer, Chevreus, uh, Clorind. The only one I don't have right now is Arlecchino. So I suppose I'll be able to use Arlecchino as a trial version character, but is the Arlecchino going to be built? And I'm assuming that because I don't have Arlecchino, I'm going to be using a like gimped version of her. And that is what is going to be causing me to, you know, have FOMO to want to pull for Arlecchino. And this is just going to be another way for them to incentivize you to pull for new characters, which I actually think is a good thing. Because let's be, let's be honest, the end game modes in every single gacha game is essentially there to incentivize you to pull for new characters. I actually think it's good to want to pull for new characters because that incentivizes me to keep playing their games. I want to keep playing their games because I actually enjoy the gameplay and, you know, the open world and the the story and whatever the fuck it is that they give us. But if there is no intrinsic incentive for a gameplay, a gameplay reason to have those characters, then I lose a lot of motivation to keep playing the game. I actually think it's a good thing that they give us some level of FOMO even if it is a FOMO that happens at the very end of the game, like this endgame mode seems to be. I am a, still a bit of confused about the open world and fantasy realm epic poem. Hopefully that becomes more clear as, as more information about the endgame go comes out. Special guest characters, Baiju, Sigwin, Alhatham, Risley, Season 1. So there's going to be even more characters, apparently. And this is all a tiny bit confusing, but what it seems to me is what, what seems to be happening here is that we're going to have some sort of story related, maybe not story related reason for them to be all together, but it seems like there will be teams of characters that are going to be specific to your spiral best and you're going to have to make them work with each other. So Siege Win, Sig Win, Sig Winnie, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I played the story in Chinese, so I never learned how to pronounce her name in English. Uh, I'll just call her Sig Winnie. Sig, Siege Win, Sig Winnie. Sig Winnie is I believe a Hydro character, so maybe she'll have some sort of synergy with Baiju, Alhatham, also Dendro, Risley, uh, Cryo. So it seems like they have some sort of synergy with each other, and we're just going to have to make them work together. So this is sort of like an official Abyss randomizer, but also not really. There was a previous event where you could, where they they gave you characters that were supposed to be randomly generated, but they're not really. Um, and I think they're not really randomly generated. They give you sets of characters that you have to build teams out of. And then once you're done with one team, you can only use them those characters one more time. And then you have to get rid of them and choose new characters. This might be what this game mode is. It's like another version of that. that just like how the, the pure fiction mode in Honkai Starro had an event for it beforehand. And just like how Summer Universe also had another event for that beforehand in, I believe, Bellabog. There was an event where you had to like click all these different tiles and you go to them and blah, blah, blah. Basically, every time that 
Honkai Staro has an event for a specific gameplay mode, that mode becomes a permanent event or just a permanent game mode eventually later on. And I think what they're trying to do in Genshin Impact is to do, is to do the same thing, which is great. Um, one thing that I have... I feel like the, the great thing about Honkai Staro is that it just keeps on building on top of itself, right? You have one one limited time event and then that limited time event goes away, but that limited time event eventually became becomes like a major part of the game itself and becomes permanent. So if they can do that in Genshin Impact, then that's what I've always wanted. So even if this gameplay mode is not like the best thing of all time, the fact that they're they're showing that they are able to build on top of what they've built in the past is a major improvement that is coming four years late, but better late than never, right? And yeah, here's just more confirmation for me that this gameplay mode might be a story specific thing that gets introduced with the Dane's Leave quest because rumors are that the Dane's Leave quest is coming at 4.7 which it has to because the summer event is going to be in 4.8. So if we're not getting a Dane's Leave Quest in 4.7, we're probably just never going to get it at all. So if it, it makes kind of makes sense that there will be story development for the Spiral Abyss during the Dane's Leave Quest. So if the Dane's Leave Quest introduces us to like this other Spiral Abyss inside like Lisa's library or something, then that makes a lot of sense to me. And yeah, I'm just wondering how this is all going to fit into the lore because so far we haven't really touched on anything when it comes to the Spiral Abyss in how it fits into like the main story. But when Genshin Impact usually does something major, it kind of ties it into the main story somehow. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. I can't, I don't know why I said that. It, in, yeah, like when, when the TCG came out, right? It was tied into the story. They give it its own story quest. So I wonder if this is going to be the same thing. Like it would be really weird if we just saw, we if we just got a, a notification that said, okay, you you need to go to the fucking library in Lisa's, it's not actually in Lisa's house. I don't know why I said that either. It's, I'm getting confused now. Um, It's inside the, the main headquarters of the Mancha Knights. I forgot the Favonius Knights, right? Why, why is, why is Lisa's library in the Favonius Knights headquarters? I actually don't know, but yeah, this this seems all very promising. I am very excited to try this. There is more information, a bit more information. You can borrow a character from a friend, but only one. So maybe this is like a better version of a trial character. Maybe if your friend has uh, a Raiden Shogun that is like C6 with a... Uh, I'm going to say S5 because I'm using Honkai Star terminology now. I have been outside of... Uh, I've been free of Genshin Impact for so long that I just don't know the terminology anymore. Imposition? Super position, I have no idea. C6, S5, or whatever. Um, basically, if you have a fully kitted out Raiden Shogun that your friend has, maybe you can borrow that, and then you don't have to use the trial shitty, the shitty trial version, which is great. Again, these are all very nice things to have because it gives you reasons to actually have friends in Honkai Star, no, Honkai Star in Genshin Impact. <laughs> Holy shit, I, I really love Honkai Star, guys. And I'm just so happy that Genshin Impact is getting more stuff that Honkai Star has been getting for so long now. Well, it hasn't actually been that long. It's been like a couple of months. It, this game is only one year old. But yeah, Genshin Impact is finally learning. It's having more competition. And I'm excited to play this game. Maybe not like all the time, but at least to the extent that I that I can actually enjoy this endgame mode. And who knows? The thing about Genshin Impact is that I, I like the story. I like the open world. I like the world they have built. But none of that really negates the fact that this game has no end game and if it can if they can just fix that part of the game then this game is really one of the greatest games of all time for me at least and honkai star honkai Starro has achieved that i think it has achieved the title of one of the greatest turn-based games at least when it comes to gacha games of all time simply because it has that end game mode yes there may be problems with the story maybe in the single law the story was kind of like meandering or whatever but i have to admit that when I ended this, the Shinzo Lofu story, I gave the I gave the story maybe like a 6 out of 10 in my mind. I mentally like kind of just checked out at the end when they were trying to make me care for Tingyuring. But I did the Fontaine story after that. And I realized that no matter how bad Honkai Star is, because it does have that gameplay, because there is like a hype boss at the end of the Shinzo Lofu storyline, because it was had some like modicum of difficulty, I was still able to enjoy myself on that level. And that's why I mentally went back and bumped up Shindolofu to a 7 out of 10. Whereas Fontaine kind of went down to an 8 out of 10 because 
One, the gameplay just wasn't there. Genshin Impact has very few amount, small amounts of gameplay now. And I think the way I play the game in particular and the way that many streamers play the game is just not that fun. Um, because it, 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 artificially, the way that streaming works and the way that content creation works is that you just have to play the game immediately after a content patch drops. And then you're forced to do the story all at one time. And then there's not really much gameplay in the story. So you're just sitting there listening to dialogue for like four hours straight. Whereas a normal player just plays the game casually. And then they go explore a bit. And then they do the story a bit. And then they explore a bit more. And then they do the story a bit more. I don't really, I haven't done that for quite a long time. And that's why I think playing the game from a fresh account has been such like a fresh treat, um, a, a treat for me. Because I don't have to adhere to that level of, you know, you know, interaction with trying to get viewers and to stream the game after the game comes out. It's much more enjoyable this way. And I think with this end game content mode, um, I'll be able to get back to content creation on a more regular basis because there will be actually stuff that I can do besides the story while streaming or just create content out of. So that's basically my experience so far with uh, Genshin Impact and why I want to come back to this game. I have already, I, I still play this game on a regular basis, but I have to admit that I skipped maybe like two or three events. I didn't do the Hilly Tro event. I didn't do the potion making event. And I think there was, I, no, actually those are the only two events I skipped. Those are, it's crazy to think about it. Even though I say that I kind of dropped off of Genshin Impact, I've only missed two events in four years since I started playing. That is the level of like <laughs> saying dedication is too cringe, but it, it's basically what it is. It's dedication. I've stayed this game for a very long time. And I think just having that end game content, it, it's not so much that it's something that a lot of players will care about, but it shows that that small amount of dedicated hardcore end game players that people, people who have stayed this game for four years for the entire time, showing us that they care about, you know, us. It matters. And that's basically all I have to say for this at this moment. I think it's a very great thing that this is finally happening. Um, will it fulfill the expectations of all players? Of course not. But just like how Pure Fiction didn't make every single player happy, I was watching a Vulcan video the other day and he said that he didn't actually like, he actually didn't like uh, Pure Fiction as much as Man uh, Memory of Chaos. And that's a perfectly valid complaint. But the fact is that they keep adding more on top of it is what matters because the end game keeps on developing. It's not just a one-time thing. And this shouldn't just be a one-time thing for Genshin Impact. It should keep on developing on top of itself after they release this new end game mode. That is what I'm hoping for at the end of the day. Not just like, oh, they're just adding one more end game mode and it's done forever. No, that should not be the case. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this now. This is Bench Gamer signing out. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're still here, bye-bye. And I'll see you guys sometimes.